The Backdoor GA Podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steed Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit steedmotorgroup.ie. We are now delighted to announce our second sponsor of the podcast. Harper Finley are a professional service recruitment company operating nationwide and are dedicated to helping people find their dream job. So delighted now to be joined by Jeff Linsky and former Goa Herner Connor Devrin to look back on Goa's heartbreaking defeat, it's safe to say, against Kilkenny. Killian Buckley literally broke Goa's hearts at the weekend. I don't think we can say any more than that. A real tough one to take last play of the game, but for Goa now it's just about regrouping. Um, they're going to face Tipperary or Offaly in the All-Ireland quarterfinal and that's going to be their focus and for the ne- for the next week or two now uh, to to be back ready for that. Jeff, how did you feel in Crow Park on Sunday when Killian Buckley hits the back of the net? That's like everybody, you you were stone shot and very disappointed, really. You know, um, you see the lads the way they recovered in the second half to go two points up, um, and not to see it out. Uh, it was tough, and I suppose up the goal the way it was conceded. You know that's that's hard to take because we had the ball in our hands three or four times, and um, so like we had, we were masters of our own downfall, really. Like when we didn't uh, clear lines, and um, look, thinking about it going up with the amount of injuries that Kenny had, uh, I was fairly confident that that that, that we we'd see it through. Um, but look, it's it's we're sitting in the championship. As we said this earlier before we came on, like it would be tipped as all we've gotten about. And then you're looking forward to a Limerick team that isn't firing on, on all cylinders, you know. So look, we're still there. Um the boys will have to pick themselves up this week, uh, bounce back and get themselves ready. But they did an awful right in the game, uh, Paul, you know. Um it's just defensively do we need do we need to, I suppose, tighten up, um, especially on, on, on the goal side of it. For you as well, Connor, in Crow Park, I'd say on Sunday, the emotions, I can imagine, you're very down one minute, you're very up the next minute. It just, I'd say that was probably the narrative of the game, you're kind of going up and down. Ah, yeah, completely. Look, um, I was up there with one of my friends of mine. And, um, you know, he got me in a bit of trouble, so he did. He was gone so wild. <laughs> call his comeback. And yeah, then they got the final goal in, last kick in the stomach and... <laughs> I had kicked any lads up my back, jumping up and down, gone mad, and he was gone. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, look, it was, it was unbelievable. Um, as I alluded to at the start, um, you know, you meet people outside and there's, you know, straight home, half a smile on your face, like, what's just happened? We just need to get out of here fairly quick, like, and digest this another time because <laughs> it was hard to, it was hard to make sense of what just happened there. And then Jeff has, the criticism, has it annoyed you? There's there's been a narrative all week just looking at some of the national media are going to finish article, um, defensive issues. Is 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 that a bit OTT? I look the, the the way things are now when you if you won the game, go over probably second, third favourites with the All Ireland because you lose it. Um obviously the spotlights on, on everything. Um then, you know, um look the the criticism is probably the, the last piece that we didn't see it out, uh, really. Um, performance up to that point have been Jekyll and Hyde as well, you know. So, like, we, we, you don't really know what you want to get with the lads any given day. And I think Henry has been touching on to get a level of consistency from them. And the performance of us was there, the, what was there the last day. Um, but now we've Tip, who will run the ball more than, than Kilkenny uh, the next day. So, look, we, we probably need to address that side of it. Look at a few position switches um, and look in, in terms of what happened to Park there at the end. I think it's, it was just fatigue, uh, mental fatigue, really, in, in terms of kicking the ball, you know. Um, and for me, really, the last 10 minutes, it, it was probably someone different than on Cody at that stage, you know, because Park had done a reasonable job, really good job up to that point. But the last 10 minutes, really, he was out on his feet. What, what do you make, Connor, of the way? Goy have been talked about since the defeat. Um, I suppose look, you have to you have to say a lot of it's fair, you know. Um we conceded a big score again the last day. And um 
you know, I don't think the I don't think the defence is lined out properly myself. Um, I I'd be playing that he work at full back. He's the best full back in the country. Um, he, he, why move him to centre back? You know, when you haven't got a, a, a natural ready made full back um, ready to go in. You know, Garage Mac made his name at six. Um, it's not easy to go back to full at uh, you know at the latter stage of your career. I know JJ Delaney did it, but JJ Delaney had the, the greatest team of all time in front of him, you know. Um I would be having Di Burke at three. Um I'd have Joe Cooney at six. Um I, I've said that the last time I was on the show. I think Joe Cooney is our best six um from what I've seen in club championship and what and from what the, the personnel that panel is. But also um like the defence starts at 15 and Henry Shefflin is going to be the first guy that says that, you know. And for me, the last day, especially in the half-hour line midfield, the guys didn't get enough cover, um, especially on the overlaps. You know, you've seen the first goal. Um, Mossy Cohen got it in um, after Blanchfield went forward. And um, you had three guys, three Galway guys on the D uh, when he was putting the ball in the net. Grealish got across from everybody. He had no help. And... Um, when I watched it back, I, I, none of them three were sprinting. You know, as far as I was concerned. Where where does it where does issues coming from, uh, Connor? Um, hard to know. Uh, unless you really yourself, like it, look, it look a small bit of it has to be a bit of a, a bit of desire, I suppose, and the, the the want to win. Like um, it, it, the easy answer is it's a lapse of concentration, you know, but th there was two laps of concentration for both of those goals for the one Mikey Butler got as well. You know, he should have been picked up by by a couple of different players um, before he got anywhere near there. You know, Dahi Burke was pulled across on John Donnelly. Uh, Donnelly was keeping him busy over the far side of the field. Um, where I was sitting, I had a good vantage point of that. And in fairness to Dahi, he got, he got across as quick as he could. But before that ever materialised, you can't have that amount of space between your half back line if they're pulled out the field and the, the, the next online, you know, so I, I heard in the Sunday game they were saying someone should have called, well, Dahi got there but the, the runner should have been picked up way before that, you know or, or checked even before that um, so it's about your setup really, you know, um, if you look at Kilkenny, how they set up for our puckouts, they, they seem to have um, Five across the middle or five across the line. They, you know, it was um, they were happy enough for 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 Galway to give a shot. But uh, when Galway did give a shot, then um, in the corners they they, they they went back to Murphy with it to go long in over the top. You know, uh, it was a strange one. You know, it seemed a little bit divided of a tactic really for me on the puckouts and and when we went short, were guys not showing, not doing the hard running at eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know, when we did go short, um, and I seen a stat there. Kilkenny won eleven out of eighteen of their own puckouts in the first half alone. I think we only got six. Um, so yeah, they need to they need to they need to come up with something to make sure we retain our own our own restart um, puckouts or or short balls because what well, I'm done the last day is not going to win any game. Everton Connor mentions their Jeff. They're they are the biggest issues at the minute. Yeah, I'd say why Joseph was in the half hour line against Dublin, Connor Cooney was our main long puckle target. Um, so I'd say that's why he was, Blanchfield picked him up. Uh, I'd say Blanchfield caught two balls over over Joseph's head. Um, I, I can see why they have him in the half hour line, but as Connor touched on, I have to agree with him. Our out, no best defender and our best stopper is Dahi. You know, he, he's, he's ready made. He's for, back to trade. Would you back, go back, back to three now? Back, back to three, yeah. Back to three. Like the modern six has to close off space and angles. But I think our scramble defence is poor, really poor. Um, Limerick have addressed it somewhat. If you watch Limerick the last day uh, in the second half, the minute the line is broke, the, the, the two midfielders, the wing back to the far side, are all sprinting back to the to the nearest post, uh, trying to protect the D. And this is all simple stuff uh, that you do even at Club Hurling. Um, and I think, that, as Connor touched on there, a lot of it's desire, it's hunger, but it's also spotting the danger. And I think a few of the lads are ball watching, and they're not thinking two or three steps ahead of, of what, what's happening in terms of the plays being developed. So, like, even Mickey Butler's goal, and it was good combination play, it was good link-up play. Billy Ryan comes out, creates the space behind him, uh, and Darren follows, follows him out towards the sideline. 
if Darren had actually just held and not followed him out, that space would have, would have been closed down. Is that something that you feel that every back in the goal he set up is more, more worried about their man, their marking? Um, well, like the, your job in the day is to, is to mark somebody. Mm. But if, if Billy Ryan's going out towards the sideline, you can leave him off, you know, concede the point out there. Uh, what you don't want to do is, is create a pocket of space behind you uh, for players to run into. Um, and that was happening in the first half uh, twice. Um, and it happened for the Mickey Butler goal. So, like, the, the runners are coming at us from deep. They're coming straight down the channels, and we're just doing a, we were doing a really poor job in getting goal side um, and closing off the space and the angles and checking the runs. Mid-season, Jeff, is this fixable? Ah, yeah, look, the, the boys will, will review that probably tonight. Um, it'll be a tough watch um, but these are all smart guys like they've been around the block they've won all Ireland's uh, they know it themselves really you know um, and as, as a unit in terms of backs um, they, they, they know what needs to be done but I think it's a collective thing and it's a mindset thing from, from the group as a whole um, to be more tuned in because look tip the next day we'll be doing the exact same thing as Kilkenny. They'll spot what, what, what uh, Dublin did to us. They'll spot what Kilkenny did. And they'll try and implement uh, the exact same tactics. Connor, as a past defender with Galway, as Jeff said, there needs to be probably words there between players. Can, can that be a difficult thing after conceding such a high score to, to have these com conversations with your defenders? Uh, no, not if the the, the spirit of the, the camp and the camaraderie of things are, are there. I put it this way, if you can't have it, it's a bigger problem. You know, if you can't have it, you're 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 not going anywhere. So um I don't think it'd be an issue. Well I can't see how it would be an issue. Um but yeah, like defensively with yourself to as a team they have to they have to come up with patterns going back. You know, everyone talks about patterns going forward. Um, but you even seen Kilkenny the last day, you know, they all all Galway's scores, Whelan's, um, Nylon's bar one, you know, uh, Concanon's most of them came out in the out, out in the wing. They were unbelievable scores, brilliant scores to be able to get. Will will we always be able to get those type of scores? You know, it's a bit of a bit of a risk hoping that you're going to have eight, nine points scored from the forty five out in the sideline, you know. So yeah, no, they'll have to they're just gonna have to knuckle down. Um almost uh, we, we will not be beaten kind of a mantra uh, has to come into the mindset and um, you get that right first you know I, I think we we always seem to put up a score um, again no matter who we're playing I think we're we're, we're going to get 20 23 points at worst so you have to be looking to conceding you know less than that less than 20 anyway and um, you just do what's needed to do that you have to maybe get a bit cuter as well you know um, if Limerick guys and the Clare lads, you know, off the ball, like the referees when they're playing, when they're refereeing those games, you ever see the the, the full length pitch view, the camera, you know, the dragging, the pulling that's gone on, you know, they, they they have almost given up trying to pull them for it because there's so much of it gone on. You can't you can't pinpoint one person for it. You might get caught once or twice for it. You know, um, I didn't see too much of that going on the last day, but Galway, they, they, they were just too too honest, maybe. Is this something you would like to perfect, Connor? Uh, yeah, well, um, I had to perfect it. I hadn't the pace to do anything else, really, you know. <laughs> Just on that, when we're talking about being more cuter and everything defensively, Jeff, is is this the main reason why Goy have struggled with coming in and out of games and their consistency? Um. <clears throat> There's so many aspects of the game, so you have to get right. Um, your puck outs, uh, your reset, your own setup, your distribution of the ball. Um, players taking responsibility at key times. I suppose level of communication. Um, this, if, if, if one part of your game, and you've seen it in the Munster final, isn't right, particularly with, the, with your own puck out, um, you lose foothold, you lose momentum. And it's very hard to wrestle it back. Um, but like the last day we started really well yeah. and then we hit a blip again and we, we responded in fairness. Um, but everyone now at this stage realises the third quarter, especially the moving quarter, 
Um, and we, we did poorly and badly. Jason made a huge impact when he came on. We'd only come off the pitch. Made a big difference. Sean and Anna, in fairness to him, for the last couple of games, has given an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of energy to the team. Um, you know, but like for me, there's a couple of more lads that probably need to see minutes. Um, I, I'm still curious as to why Jimmy Ryan isn't seeing some game time in terms of his speed and athleticism. Um, particularly his yeah. form. I don't. I, I don't know what's going on in, in terms of in-house games. I don't know. But like someone like like, like Jamie coming out with five six minutes to go. Um, is Liam Collins ready? Declan McLaughlin. These lads. Um, we we probably need more from our bench. Um, we're getting it with Sean. We got it from Jason. Um, but we we probably need more uh, in the modern yeah. game, especially to 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 finish out these games from 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 the subs that are coming up. Just from obviously being involved with the University of Galway this year as well, Jeff, at Sigerson, you obviously work closely with Tune and Killeen. He's just back from injury. Is he someone you expect to be given the yeah, chance? Yeah, look, in, in terms of uh, as a ball player, uh, there's no better uh, hurler in, in that position. I, I, like in fairness to him, you could play any, anywhere across the half-back in midfield. And, um, he would be somebody that you would be keeping a close eye on. Um, but like you also have one Wallace would have picked up on Cody in, in, in Fitzgibbon as well. You know, so these lads, you know, I'm just looking at the profile, even of our own lads, these lads are going to need to develop over the next year, two, three years, and they're, they're going to need exposure if they're going to make the step up. Can you see either of them being given chances against it? Look, it's a, look, it's a gamble. Um, yeah. But you're going to have to trust the squad for the spirit of the group. Um, and if lads are showing form, what well, what would happen this weekend? Really, Connor probably probably two two ten minute rounds. Probably that that would probably be it. Um, it's a recovery Wednesday and Friday for the lads. They'll probably do something Sunday, and that would be it. Um, because that game the last because of the heat, um, and that was probably after the Dublin game their first real big test. But they've got loads in the tank. Like they haven't come through a monster campaign. Um, yeah. whether it's four or five high octaves, it's their, it's their second proper championship match you know so look I'm, I'm sure the lads will, will, will bounce back but there's a lot of stuff that we need to get right in terms of our own set up position to play and defensive side of it How do Henry and the management team get the squad to bounce back here Connie? Um, it'll have to come from the players first and foremost you know we all know um, Henry's his own mantra down through the years and Cody's as well, you know, it's the, both standing up and winning your own ball and, you know, putting your putting yourself forward and no hiding place really. And um, that's the first thing you go away management and Henry will be looking at the last day. Like, who didn't put themselves forward, you know? And, like, straight up, they, they have to be up for the chopping block. It's as simple as that, you know? And you have to, you if you don't, if you don't give guys in the bench a chance when they can blatantly see guys underperforming on the field in front of them, you know, you're you're diluting what you have behind you. You know, you're 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 undermining their confidence as well. So you're showing you to don't you don't trust them. So look, I think it's the right game for Galway, the chip game, first and foremost. Um I wouldn't like to see us playing someone like a Dublin or a Wexford if 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 they happen to be coming, you know, uh, that would put us under a little bit more pressure to, to actually win it. You know, it's it's obviously knock out the next day as well. So it's basically they have to they have to in one sense cut loose, but at the same time they want to have to have a better as Jeff said as well, and both of us said it really. But they want to have to have some better patterns and better idea of what 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 we're going to do to try and retain our own pocket and, and and keep possession of it and you know walk the ball into the, the scoring positions a little bit better. Uh, just for, for, and, and that's more to take the pressure off the defense. You know, the longer the ball is up that end of the field, you know, the less hardship you have in the backs, you know, and that's what's going to have to happen. They're obviously back training tonight, Paul. Ben, you were speaking at the All-Ireland Championship launch today, Jeff. Is it very much, it's kind of for these players now, it would have been tough thinking about training, but they get this out of their system and that result is just packed after training. Look at the once the review meeting happens and you're back out on the pitch um, and you put in a say a good half an hour, 40 minutes work, 
you know, you get back in the car, you're feeling a small bit better. So, like, we've all gone through big losses as managers and coaches, um, and invariably everybody feels a bit better after training tonight. And then you're looking forward then to, to Tipperary uh, and getting everything right in the camp then. I suppose the most important thing, Paul, is it's the quality of training that you're going to do with the lads. So it's not how long you're there, but you have to make sure that everything that you're doing with the lads is on point. Is do, they go, right. do they go flat out this week? Uh, they wouldn't tonight. The lads who didn't see any game time, they, they'd probably put in a 70-minute session. The rest of the boys are probably 25 minutes max. The, the bodies probably wouldn't be able for it. Um, but they'd be feeling a lot better after, after training. Uh, once the group comes back together again, because look, once you're inside in the camp, uh, the outside noise, you, you, you tend to ignore it. Um, and the lads are well experienced regards that. Um, but I suppose the next important thing is, is that whatever they do with the weekend is on the money in terms of quality and, and quantity. If we just look at the game and, and into the key moments of the game, Connor, we obviously talked there how go is started really well like if you look at the first opening four minutes the work rate and everything it was really impressive the way they were able to take the scores Brian Cannon's score in the second minute then Wheeler won a third Joseph Clooney then on four minutes putting them into four points to no score lead like it, it, they really did like in the very early early on stages in this game start well yeah they did and uh, for me it was the, the speed of the ball that they got into the forwards that made the difference. Um, there was definitely, I'd say, something mentioned about the delay in the ball going into the inside line, especially Conor Whelan against Dublin. He seemed to be moving a lot left in the centre and um, the ball was being, for some reason, not being sent into him, even though he was probably in the prime position to get it. Um, so he got some ball, but uh, in general, look, they got the ball in quick. Um, you know, it was one hand passed off one short pass and then in, um, they weren't delaying on anything. So that's what got us the foothold. Obviously, Kenny then got the goal, they just brought them back into it. And, um, you know, the, the overall, the first half, you know, it, it, the intensity wasn't huge, um, I suppose, from what we've seen in Munster, Munster games. Um, but it, 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 was a de it was a decent game going, going back and forth and there was some good scores got. But um, God, we just got a foothold early on and just started dictating the terms. Um, obviously, then half time, that's when things changed. And um, it was probably the 50th minute before we got uh, got back um, to, to, to on the scoreboard again. And even as Connor Joe Canning was referencing at half time, we went 6 1 up. You were thinking, Jesus, like we're hurling really well this year and probably not something we've seen from God very. In the early stages of games, maybe they've started slow, but they did start really slow, 6-1. And as Canning was saying, Mossy Keown scores a goal, and he nearly always seems just like this player who scores a goal against Galway. He does, yeah. There's been a few, there's a few guys you put, you put in that bracket, not just Mossy. Um, yeah, but look, it was just a switch off. Um, you know, there's, there's, we had two or three opportunities just to, to, to gather the ball first and foremost and to, to, to maybe slow the game down, slow the play, that facet of the play down. And um, when they broke inside, then, you know, we just didn't get back fast enough. Um, for that, 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 one, that one was hard to take. That now and Mikey Butler's goal, it was just, like, Henry won't be happy when he looks back at that. that that's going to be highlighted, you know. And, um, you know, I'd be surprised if you don't see uh, a better mindset uh, regards to that kind of stuff the next day. I think you're going to see a little bit more, as Jeff alluded to a while ago, the, of the Limerick guys, you know, getting back into the the, the danger positions and, and stopping those goals from happening. You know, periods after that as well, Jeff, in the first half, particularly with uh, for Faden, like Mossy Keown gets the goal, it's one one to six points, then. Uh, Kilkenny after 60 minutes bring it back to 1-6-6 go and then 1-9 to 1-6 and like we're in a good position at 1-9 to 1-6 and probably similar to Galway's early start again Kilkenny just straight after that hit back Walter Walsh's goal Yeah um, and again it's down to defensive mindset again um, we're in aiming a shape talking to me a few years ago and he, he, players broke it down to three categories one was a stopper 
Um, just lads who are interested in just defending first. And I think our lads need to be focused on that the next time. Forget about the ball, just make sure he doesn't get it. Uh, and Kilkenny, as we know for a long time, they're extremely powerful in the air. Um, and I think if, if, if the defensive unit with their two wing forwards and our two midfielders can clog up them channels, we'll, we'll have a great chance against uh, Tip. To go and clog up and kind of switch tactic maybe to what they've been doing, is that just not a choice now do you feel and you feel that just needs to be done? If if you put Dahi back, like if you look at the tip full forward line, I know I'm moving on to Kenny, but if you look at the tip full forward line, Jason Ford might be back. It's probably five weeks since the hammer. Um, Jake Morris will be back. Um, so who's going to pick up these guys, um, Garage O'Connor will be probably 50 50. Um, and then you have John or Noel McGrath, which, whichever one will be out in midfield. Um, inside, apart from Jake Morris, there, there's not blind and pace in there. Um, yeah. But it's tracking the runners from deep that the lads need to make sure that they're thinking two or three steps ahead at all times. Once the ball is turned over, they're all defenders. And it's probably a bit like what they did when the, when we won in 17 and 18. You know, our half four of them were really, really deep. Um, but defensively, we were really good at, on, on the wheel, um, clogging up those those channels, making sure we didn't go see goals. Um, the other one is you, you can possibly develop a plus one, a sit and six or park, um, get a midfielder to kind of sit in front. I think Carl was doing that an awful lot the last anyhow. He was sitting in front of, of Dahi. Um, and he was distributing ball well apart from one and loose pass in the first half. Um, but look, it, apart from the defensive stuff, and it is a huge part of the game, and the lads did an awful lot right, uh, but there is key components to how we're playing that needs to be fixed. Yeah, you were talking there, I think the conversion rate was at something like 68%. Uh, like it's... It's definitely a positive um, air conversion rate to be taken out of uh, Sunday. Yeah, and look, when Kevin went inside and Wheeler came out, there was good ball going into into Kevin, but I'm just scratching my head still. In previous game, Wheeler was in there. I counted in 40 minutes of hurling, I think two or three balls into him. Yeah. Shooting from 80 yards out. And like, the return from them is, 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 is very poor. And I'd say it was probably extremely frustrating for him uh, to be in there looking at the ball sailing wide when you have someone like him inside with Bino. And look, it's, it's, it, it doesn't have to be a perfect ball either, um, but you're looking at the quality of ball that Cody gets every day he goes out. It's one bounce in front of him and he's switching hands and he's catching it with his other hand and then he got his position, he turns, switches hands again and, and, and he, he pops it over the bar. I, I'd love to see an odd time um, that quality of ball being fed into our inside line to see how much damage we do. And we would, we would. Um, Bino got three points to last day. Kevin got three. Wheeler won six. Evan got four. You know, it's a good score return from 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 your forwards. With Connor Wheeler as well, like you, you could even see the comparison of the ball Aaron Gillan was getting in the Munster final uh, compared to some of the ball he's got all year. But just interested, Connor, to bring you in here. Connor, we had labeled at the weekend as a one trick pony um, at halftime. It was, it was, it was mind boggling to say the least. Um, as Joe Canning was saying, uh, a one trick pony who scores one tree isn't bad. Yeah, um, to be honest, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be very upfront here. Um, when Whelan first came on the scene, uh, you know, I probably had the same thoughts myself. Um, but the way that line has developed over the last few years, I don't think there's too many that would have improved from um, 19 to what it was, you know, 20, 25, 26 maybe, um, as much as him. And the quality, like, has there, has anyone got one six of those quality of scores? Like, the, the goal was brilliant. Um, read it perfectly. You know, it's exactly what you want a uh, killer forward to do. He, he he's looking for a goal there before that ball ever gets gets um, to the two guys that go up for it. Um, and the points he got, you know, I certainly didn't think he had that in his locker the first couple of years I've seen him. But you know, uh, he, he anyone that says any doubts 
of Whelan's ability. Um, and I, I've had no doubts the last couple of years, but um, anyone that has any doubts going forward, you know, is a different case. But as Jeff said there as well, about the type of ball that's going into Owen Cody, and um, you could say it's the same type of ball goes into Gillan. Um, they know the ball is coming, so they know the timing of the runs. They know the, the, the spaces to move into. You seldom see Gillan or Cody making a, a mad dash out to the side, uh, you know, and just solely relying on their pace. They're, they're actually moving in behind their man. They're coming left and right, and then they know when to go. Um, that's been a problem for Galway um, and, maybe, and Whedon maybe as well, in the sense that I don't think Con um, Connor has full faith in when the ball is coming in. They've got it into him the last day, to a certain extent. Um, uh, for a couple of his scores, the, the, the rest of his scores, he, he, he more or less made himself. You know, he, he, he won hard ball lost his man and threw it over the shoulder, you know, so most of the credit is his in those ones. Like, that's the kind of stuff that they're going to, if they want to get more out of Whelan and more of the guys inside, Brian Concannon as well, he's a finisher, like, you know, he got three points the last day. Uh, maybe didn't do a whole lot from open play outside of that, and he probably needs to do more for me, um, get more involved in the tackles and the the, the hooks and blocks and stuff. Um, but if you get those guys, if you can manufacture a shooting opportunity with those guys, they're going to finish it. You know, and I think Nyland is as well. Um, everyone always says like he doesn't maybe do enough from open play, but you could see the effort that he was putting in. You know, he's trying to correct that himself. You know, and he and he got his reward the last day, four points against Kenny. You know, and, uh, you know it's his first real full championship year as well. So that that's a big plus for as well for us. And Kevin Cooney, you know, I think he he was a massive threat all through the game. What did you make of the comment about Conor Whelan, Jeff? Well, he was he was made humble by, I think, was a comment afterwards. He had to announce him as man of the match. I look at it probably just off the cuff comment that probably in hindsight he probably wish he didn't say no. But look, I think Whelan's that's um, over the last couple of years, and I'd say he's fairly frustrated as to the way we're playing or quality of play over the last while. Uh, as as Connor alluded to there and touched on it, um, the ball that we're hitting in uh, and the timing, Arton and Sink, he doesn't know. I think Joe touched on it. I didn't. I didn't watch back on on the Sunday game, the live one, uh, yet. Like I think Joe touched on it. Like he doesn't know when the ball is going to be hit. Yeah. Because the boys aren't in the tune. Uh, but what I saw the last of in the second half, um, I, I because Carl was on the field. If you can get that diamond there um, of quality players and something would I would have used Bino in the past at Fitz, when you bring him out wing forward, smart things will happen when you get smart players on, on, on the ball. And you need these smart players out there in order for the for the type of ball that you want to go inside to, to Kevin Cooney. Um, Jason's probably come back into the reckoning again um, in these lads, but I'm just wondering, Connor, there and Paul, will will their position switches be made? That needs to be made. That's probably the the burning question. Yeah, Jason, particularly Connor, he's made significant impacts the last two days out now. Yeah, he has. To be fair to him, and um, uh, what I've noticed of him the last day, and and, and when he came on against Kilkenny, um, but on Northern Park and stopping him, he, he he's. Uh, you'd often hear it mentioned in, in Premier League soccer, he's uh, high intensity sprints, uh, no, not, not to get over technical about it, but he's really hungry to, to, to get on the end of things and, and, and make an impact. You know, he, he's not just floating around looking for a loose ball, hoping for a handy one. He, he's, he, he seems to have the bit between his teeth to, 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 you know, get the ball over the bar, get goals, you know, so he has to come into the reckoning definitely the next day. Um, for me, there has to be a couple of changes. You know, um, there has to be some recycling going on of that team, and I think it's better to do it from the start. You mentioned there has to be significant changes. Where? A forward line, definitely. Who, who comes in? Um, best half forward line for me. You need Huilo inside. Nyland's going to be inside. And Brian Cannon, Brian Cannon. That brings you to Kina Fahey's out. Um, Kina Fahey's out. I was just wondering. He's out he with a groin injury. Okay. He hasn't seen game time. So you're looking at Joseph was there the last day. And Tom Mano was there the last day. 
Um, but I Kevin obviously put... has to stay there for his former tennis last day. John Kevin is nailed on, yeah. Yeah, Kevin's nailed on, Wheelow's nailed on, Evans nailed on, Bino's nailed on. Like Sean Lennon in Club Hurling for Turlock is our top scorer, but is he, does he warrant to start now after the two performances over the last two days? For me, yes, probably win back. Yeah, possibly. Can Jason play that role of wing forward, do you feel? He, he, play, he played it in 2015. Yeah. It's it's just a question now because obviously there's, there's a few male long starters there, but there probably needs to be someone brought in for ball winning. I think I think our, prob our problem, our most na uh, the, the, the most glaring problem is we don't have a natural centre forward, really. You know, and that you know, you, you always talk about the spine of your team, and again, as I said, lots of times already, like Dahi from E three, Joe Cooney at six, um, is Colin Mannion centre forward? Could he play there? I think he's probably our best option. Uh, for me, he doesn't give us enough defensively going back. Um, I think we need a more workhorse midfield. You know, um, if Carl Mannion gets six balls and six scoring opportunities, 50, 60 yards from goals, you'd imagine he's going to get four. You know, is he going to get the same opportunities at midfield? No, he's not. Um, you know, you might get the odd day here and there that he will, but uh, four times out of five, he won't. So I'd play Carl Mannion, um, centre forward, maybe Jason beside him. And then you probably have a toss up between two or three other guys for the other wing. What would you do there, Jeff? Are you similar to Connor? Yeah, look, the, the, the big issue is for, is for if we can get a shooter at 11, uh, and you, if you put Cahill there, um, I'm just checking who was centre forward for tip or centre back for tip the last time? Against Waterford. Um, one second now. Uh, that game they obviously came up uh, short against Waterford. Centre back for Tip was Brian O'Mara. Brian's a good hurler, though. Um, but he he he'll want to six. He he want to six. So if we can we if we can get another player there, um, that's able to come into midfield, link and play. Um, Roland Roland didn't see any game time in the last day. Um, would I give him a go in midfield, yeah, rather than move forward? I, 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 I definitely probably. We probably need legs, lads. It's not probably we do need legs around the middle third, um, and the basic problem is we're facing our own goal, is is having them guys are able to get back, and as Connor touched on there, ball is just back, you know, um, and obviously match fitness will be a lot better the next day. Um, but I just think with our two wing back spots, if you have Finton and Garage, uh, especially you need speed there. I know you have Darden and you have Jack Grealish, but I think Sean for me does definitely come into the reckoning. Uh, Lennon, um, and then with we'll the rest of the subs, Jason, it's going to be probably a toss up between Jason and Tom Manning for that wing forward spot. Um, Tom's it's ultimately really what position they look at Sean Lennon for, isn't it? Well, he's been coming on wing back, like. Yeah. Do you think um, they is an option for midfield? Yeah, possibly That's as well. He's like, played but, early on in the league. Yeah, but he's performing better at at, at wing back, Paul. Yeah. I don't know what Connor thinks. Like, um, he's been performing yeah. a lot. But for me, uh, Sean Lennon, Sean Lennon looks like he has the defensive mindset to 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 be able to help out there. Um, you know, to to work back. And again, I know obviously with my Mulya hat on, I know Ronnie Lennon is um, is very he's very clever in how he um, covers the six spot um, for us last year. You know, he's um, he he's cover and his communication is very good working back. You know, I, I I'd rather see him at eight or five, maybe than ten or twelve. You know, um, and plus you know he he had the legs um, to stay moving. For, for 60, 70 minutes as well. So I think maybe Ronan and Sean would probably be our best options. Yeah, no, there's a, there's, there's a huge amount of options there. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of changes are made. That, uh, just back to the game, uh, just for the concluding bit, 
that third quarter, Jeff, was a big struggle, but huge character to turn around from seven points down to then go two up. Yeah, you, you can't fault the lads' um, character, especially against Dublin when they were 12 down. Um, but it's to get the level of consistency that they're going to need that gets the result against Tip. Um, they're, need, they're going to need to piece together um, higher quality of play you now uh, in each of the quarters uh, to see it through. Um, but I, I think Connor is 100% right. Um, Dahi for me at three and Joseph at six might will probably give us a better uh, foundation at the back and then make sure that we have guys midfield that are able to cover back um, and one of our wing backs at least. I'm just looking at the tip team there again. Like you have Mark Hill inside and Garage O'Connor is usually at 11. Like you have Bonner lads, Garage Mack can pick up Bonner Maher. Perfect. Yeah, you know, but Noel McGrath's the guy that makes them tick. So someone's going to have to man mark him, uh, yeah. especially. Uh, Connor Stakelham's had had a really good year uh, thus far. But if you tie down Noel, Jake Morris, um, and Q, you, you'd probably, but they probably say, say the same about us with Connor Whelan and Brian Concannon, you know, um, is to get the matchups right. But I think with, with Tip, especially, you can get after. Uh, Owen Connolly um, is one guy I'd be looking at to kind of say, right, yeah, fine, we can go after him. But Michael Breen isn't an out and out full back. Like he's, he's been playing that far yeah. Line. yeah. So defensively, could could you could you get him? Could you get Wheelow to get on him? But no, they'd probably get Barrett or Ronan Maher to pick up Wheelow. Um, and it's trying to create mismatches there then with with, with the rest of with, with the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, Tip are playing um, awfully this weekend. We're, we're not trying to attend awfully people here around them, but going on current form, you would expect that Tip will get over um, awfully at the weekend. But we won't, we won't rule out a total surprise either day. But just on that, Connor, is character probably has to be the most impressive thing from the Scala team um, so far this year, the last day as well, like looking dead and buried and coming back yeah definitely um, look, if they didn't have character Shefflin wouldn't have them in there first and foremost you know um, he's his second year in there now and um, that's the main thing I was impressed with Conor Whelan um, at the end of the game his comments you know he was asked to get man in the match and you know he, 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 you could tell by him he was in no doubt of the character of the guys and um, there's you know I, I'm again I think the tip game is the right game for Galway the next day um, I'm. I'd be. I'd be. A lot of the guys played very well the last day. You know, there's a lot of positives to come out of it. You know, you have Wheelow, you have Nyland, you have Kevin Cooney. Um, all done very well up front. You know, and only that last minute, not even last last five seconds. You know, this conversation would be a lot a lot different. And as Jeff said, we'd probably be. I think we'd probably be second pair of the All Ireland if we'd won the last day. You know. Just on that situation, there probably there probably is stages that they could have done things differently, Connor. But at the end, you can tell fatigue just had its impact. Then, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but look, it's easy to look at that moment in isolation. Like the, the, the both teams would have would have had um, different moments. You know, uh, TJ Reid messed up a free. Um, probably the best free taker of all time for me. I think they're getting too easy for him. Passed off two of them, one sixty-five, and uh, that went over. But the the twenty-one, they got caught for, and he hit the post. Another one. So you know, Galway probably snatched at a couple of chances they probably shouldn't have had. I remember Joe Cooney probably trying to hit the ball a little bit too quick. Probably should have recycled it in the second half. You know, so it's easy to look at that just that one moment. But look, in truth. There's always several moments, you know, it's like a goalie dropping the ball out of his hand, you know, and you're losing the game by a point, you know, where did the ball come from? What happened before that ball is hit? You know, it's, it's always the last thing that happens that you remember. So, um, yeah, onwards and upwards for me. Jeff, just a question here that came in from one of the followers on Instagram. Um, you just had the question box open uh, before the show. And a question that came in was, 
do you think after Sunday, Galway still have what it takes to go and reach the All Ireland final and win it? Do you still feel it's capable, or it's obviously, as we talked about, going to be difficult? But do you still feel this group is capable of it? No, I'd say Saturday week or Sunday week. Um, look, it's a big blow in terms of what happened on Sunday, but they're still in the championship. Like, um, that's the most important thing. And if you were in Cork's position or Waterford's position, um, they they would rather. And the one thing about this championship, when you get um, a tough day at the office, no more than Tip had against Waterford, you learn an awful lot in in, in defeat. Um, yeah. But I think Connor's touched on it there as well, and, and I've come to the same conclusion. We're going to need to change things up, really. Um, they, they, they did an awful lot right. But we need to start out the defence. We're just leaking too many goals. Um, we need to start that in uh, the next day to give us ourselves a right chance. And if we can get that right, get the win against Tip, then it, it, it's it's up against Limerick. But it, it's going to be a, a, a huge battle against uh, Tipperary the next day. Um, Offaly probably put it up to them for, for like I said, Johnny will have them well set up. He'll know. Um, Brendan Mayer too has an insight there. Yeah, Brendan Mayer as well. Like so, like is Brendan with Carlo though? No, Brendan's with Brendan and his brother Martin are with. Oh it. yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, but like Johnny Levin will know an awful lot of these Tipperary lads from his time in club hurling tip. So I'd say awfully he'll, he'll he'll put it up in 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 different parts to tip. But look, as I said already, the next two training sessions, especially, um, the lads will be well recovered uh, by the by the weekend and then it's just getting the heads right for for the battle against uh, Tipper Offaly. Do you still feel, Connor? for you, do you still feel this group the one in All-Ireland this year? Uh, I think you have to look, um, I'm going to take a, a horse racing analogy, a line of form. Um, <laughs> I think you have to, because the Munster Championship has been so I suppose, spectacular for the want of another word, um, it's very hard to tell exactly where Galway and Kenny are. So I think if you look at over the last two years and what Galway done last year and how to put Limerick to the pin of their collar last year and, and look at how Limerick blew Kilkenny away in the final for a finish and that performance that they put up, like you, you, definitely, could, you definitely couldn't put Limerick in, at the same level as last year as, as this year. Obviously, they have a couple of injuries as well, but they, they do look a little bit short of it No. If they improve hugely, and it's possible from the Munster final to the semi final, if the same Limerick is there this year as there last year, and what I've seen from Galway so far, we're not beating Limerick. All right, that's not obviously taking Tipperary for granted, but I'm still a little bit um, unsure of how good or not so good Galway and Kilkenny are. Um, but I'm I'm just happy it's the tip game, it's tip where we have the next day. I just think we always raise our game for tip. You know, I can't remember, uh, Jeff, you might have a better idea. I can't remember us underperforming hugely, you know, like we did against Waterford a couple of years ago um, in Thurlis. And then I remember uh, maybe nine, ten years ago, previous John McIntyre's time, we did a, a very bad performance against Waterford and Thurlis again that time. But I just think tip is the, the right game at the right time for these lads. You know, like why have they to lose now? You know, everything to gain. And they're going into a semi final if they get over tip. Um, underdogs against All Ireland champions that may be on a downward curve. You know, it could be set up for them to get to a final. You know, and we're never, and it, it, Claire Kilkenny, it's hard to know what way that will go as well. The, the same, the same question applies. How good are Galway and Kilkenny against the Munster teams? But uh, Galway against Kilkenny in an All Ireland final, if if it was to happen again, I would definitely fancy Galway, and we're not going to fear Clare no matter no matter what. So yeah, the Burlington book, Connor. Um, yes, he's he's uh, very positive. But <laughs> 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 what a better word? Yeah, I'm uh, an, an optimistic, but sure. Look, that's what it's yeah. about. Look, at the end of the day. Um, None of us enjoyed the last day, and no, look, we, we 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 pride ourselves in being Norwegians, and we pride ourselves in Ireland. And like Connor's touched on there, it's tip. Um, there will be an edge to it. It's not going to Ireland. It's what we want. 
Um, touch wood, they don't bring us to Cork. <laughs> touch yeah. wood, because I, I yeah. can't imagine yeah. um, our county board agreeing to that now. Yeah, just as Jeff mentions there, 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 there's rumblings already of if it is Galway Tip and Dublin Clare that we could have a double header in Porky Guive, which just seems absolutely ludicrous to bring uh, all those four counties. So we'll have to see how that plans out. But ultimately, heartbreak for Galway at the weekend. They're not out of the championship. Um, and it is Tipperary Offaly, as we mentioned in the all and in quarterfinals that go and face um, and venues, times and everything. But it is going to be Saturday week anyways. That's a definite. But before we do finish, that, um, the club championship draws took place last night. Um, so they are obviously scheduled in at the minute for August 6th and August 7th. Jo I'll just um, read out the senior draw that took place. So group one, you'll have Tommy Larkins, Clamour Daly, Clambridge, or Moore. Group two, Portumna, Turlock, Gort, and Thomas's. Group three, Mike Cullen, Lockeray, Capitagon, Kilcon Iron. And group four, Castlegar, Aradran, Crockwell, and Sarsfield. Just from going by those draws, um, Connor, obviously the senior A and senior B is taken out of it now this year. You just have the, the straight, well, you still have senior A and senior B, but there's no kind of crossover. But just initially from the draw last night, anything jumping out? Um, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and the, to be quite honest, the fact that there's three teams qualifying over each group, I think it's uh, massively diluted. Um, the, the better teams, the, the higher quality teams, are going to be able to time their run to the knockout stages. Um, obviously, for the for the teams that you know, the, the third and fourth place seeded teams, you know, without putting a grade on on anyone deliberately, um, it, it's hardened them. Uh, I I don't agree with this format of the championship whatsoever. I, I think it's we might as well just move to straight knockout hurling for your top ten teams and call the rest intermediate. Yeah, it's even where I'm just about to bring in the senior B draw. But the senior B draw is obviously Mullia, Lee Meadows, Anthony Roy, Haskell Fowler in Group 1. Group 2, Climber, Beha, Point Pierce, Kilnadima. Have we got something wrong with the structure, Jeff? When Connor talks there about three teams and then he talks about, well, he hasn't talked about it, but eight teams in senior B ultimately playing for, just for promotion to senior A. Probably be more competitive in terms of uh, and kind of touched regarding teams timing it. Like a lot of lads are gone to the states now as of this week, and look, I went through this last year. You're under immense pressure then when, when boys are away uh, and, and relying on lads to come back. And if you get a few injuries uh, with club teams, um, you're, you're kind of in trouble. But there's lots of room for error if there's if there's only three teams. So the like in senior A there. Uh, the top teams there, Sarsfields, Turlock, Thomas's, Lockray, they'd all be fine, you know, because it's a three team group and it's the same as senior B, you know. Um, and it's it's probably, and, and Connor's right, it's, it's probably, there's too much room for, for error, really. Um, and it doesn't really kind of kick off until you get to the knockout stages. And a lot of these games, um, there, there isn't the intensity that you'd want in them, um, to be honest with you. And uh, Gaul Club Hurling doesn't really kick off then for me until you get the three teams qualified. And you look, there, there probably will be very little surprises in, in who qualifies for many of them groups. In Senior A, especially Senior B, it'll be it'll be different, you know. Um, but you, you, you can work out on, as Connor touched on as well, regarding form lines and who's doing what. You can look at the league uh, for, for guidance as to how teams are going. And how the camps are um, in terms of preparation. But look, you're down to nitty gritty stage now. You're in June, mid June, and you're whatever, you're six, seven weeks out then from your first championship match. Do you miss not being involved, Connor, this year now? Uh, no, um, I've done, done my three years, and look, we had our firstborn in November. Um, uh, no, no, I'll change the answer, actually. I didn't miss it for the first four or five months. I say Once the, the long evening started to come in, you know, I was passing by the pitch there and you'd see, you'd see the cars outside and you'd be like, oh, jeez, I wouldn't mind being in there, you know, ha having a bit of crack with the lads. And 
putting them through their paces or and um I, I obviously was feeling very sorry for myself this week. I went back and played a junior B match, so I'm I'm sitting here and and suffering in silence <laughs> today. So yeah, but uh no, yeah, you'd miss it this time of year. Yeah, when when the lads are hopping the and the, and the pitch is caught and the, the ground is good and all that, and you have you have numbers and it's 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 you couldn't be at better, but you know, I didn't I definitely didn't miss it January and February and March anyway. Still going strong. Yeah. Jeff, are you missing it? No. <laughs> no. I'm uh, too busy with the underage and medals now, to be honest with you. So um, even we're, we're, we're qualified on the 13 there, and we're, we're busy with that, you know, and that's that has my focus now, to be honest with you. And I'm doing a few sessions in for, for Headford underage as well, so I'm I'm busy with that as well, you know. So, um, yeah, look... Uh, when you're in it amongst it and you're in it for a long time um, and you get yourself out of it, you don't miss January, February, March, you know, April, they're, they're the hard slogs, but when it comes to the summer, um, you know, the, we're all the same, you know, we're, we're, we're used to, we're creatures of habit, you know, we're, we're used to being either playing or involved um, and Connor's able to play junior B, but <laughs> my legs went a long time ago. Uh, I, can, I can I can guarantee you I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well to finish the intermediate draw, Turlock, Karenmore, Cylon, Anadam, Group 1, Group 2, Kiltormer, Rahoon, Clarenbridge, Kilbacanty, Group 3, Prothwell, Milik Airport, Ballygair, Abinock Boy, and Group 4, Kinvera, Teen Abidjan Irish, On Spidoon, and Ballandrine. Um, that's all we have time for on our podcast today. A massive thank you to the two lads for coming on. Okay. The Backdoor GA Podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steve Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit stevemotorgroup.ie. We are now delighted to announce our second sponsor of the podcast. Harper Finley are a professional service recruitment company operating nationwide and are dedicated to helping people find their dream job.